Hello there folks and welcome to the stream. My name is Mike D'Angelo, aka That Tells Guy, and we are today looking at some maps. We've got quite a few today because uh, we've got a couple of people who I commission who will uh, get me their, their maps at different times. And uh, we've got both sets of commissioned people's maps at the same time today. Uh, so we're going to take a little deeper look and, uh, and see what each of them delivered us. So we, we kind of looked at the snowy field um, last week when we were looking at like some of the things that might happen in a uh, in a map that's a little you know you can make adjustments and uh, kind of improve what you have we had uh, some 15 foot horses and stuff like that and 12 foot long you know wolf dogs and things um, I asked uh, the the map maker for this map uh, nightly lore maiden to make some adjustments she did they came out wonderfully uh, so now we can actually look at some of these things a little bit more intently. Um, at some point, what I'll do is, I don't know if it'll be today, I want to try and get back to the uh, the tower map that we were working on last week, because I know that it's still going to be a lot of work. Um, at some point, anytime someone gives me a commissioned map, what I do is I will typically go in and do at least two variants of that map, so that... Um, when we are delivering this to our patrons or to the people who buy our stuff on Drive Through RPG, they have a decent amount of content. Um, the maps by themselves, fantastic, chef's kiss, uh, but we definitely do like to add a little bit more to it. So we might do kind of like a, an interpretation of this map where we have you know, maybe some footprints going across the snow and stuff like that. Um, we might do it where that's a little bit more blizzardous, and maybe we have some uh, some visual obscuring snow that's going across the screen, things of that nature, and in that case, maybe we'd have the dogs kind of poking their heads out underneath, uh, like the wagons or the tents or something like that, and have the horses, you know, being a little bit more warm by the, uh, like underneath the boughs of the trees, stuff like that. Um, we wanted to do kind of like a, like a market kind of situation here, so that's why you have, um, at least with these two tents over here, you know, some tables with a lot of stuff on them um, and it looks like Lore Maiden did a wonderful job putting things together by hand it wasn't like one of the, the default things that you see where the um, the material is already on the table she actually painstakingly put together these things really made them pop made them look nice um, just very happy with the way that those things came out let's um we, like I said, we already kind of looked at this one, so I'm, I'm already aware of what I'm looking at for the most part. There was a couple of things that she added after the fact. Let's take a step back to our map screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I had too much acidity today, and my voice is not happy with me. Let's take a look at uh, one of the other maps that I just got today. Um, and it was, I've, I've certainly seen, uh, this was the cartographer... Becca Tigris, who's given us uh, maps before, she had uh, a similar issue that um, that Lore Maiden had with uh, with a couple of her things early on, um, and the one map that we ended up getting where the things were a little bit too big. Um, we had like coffins and graves and uh, cages and stuff that were too big for a regular human person, and we were doing the kind of math before where we were taking the um, the lines and we were drawing them <clears throat> across the grid. To verify how big something was, how big it should be, that kind of thing. Um, and it looks like, for the most part, we're in much better shape this time around. We've got um, pews that are, you know, of normal dimension. We've got uh, pillars that are, you know, around five feet long and wide. Um, we've got these cool little lanterns that, because they're coming up into the air, uh, you can kind of understand, like, the dimension that it's got. So there's nothing wrong with that that I can see. Again, pillars that are about five feet. Don't have too many problems here. A chair that's the right size. We've got these kind of like confessional little lines here. Um, chairs are looking good. Statues are pretty wide, but um, they're kind of like base reliefs. Bass reliefs? I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, so those, they look pretty good. We've got the, the, the centerpiece one back here. So that's looking pretty good. Thus far, nothing looks too shabby um we've got some stairs that are going up over here you can see like it's a little bit darker down on this side and it gets lighter as you go up 
um, this side over here, it's descending. So you can see the, the shadow is showing you um, the descent into the basement. And uh, we'll go to the second floor and then we'll double back down to the basement. One thing that I did notice with a real quick pass, um, the shadow that Becca did is um, it's not a stamp which I don't even know if there's an ability to do a stamp with, uh, with you know, to, to do like a shadow overlay or anything like that. What she was doing was uh, with the brush layer, there is a top brush layer that, uh, that came out that looks really nice. Ah, we got Nerdy Keb in the house. He sent over a, a, an Adelia Love uh, picture. The, um, the, the thing that you'll notice is there's a top brush layer and I was able to confirm this because if you go to the erase button, you can actually just pull it back and uh, and get rid of that, and that's how you know. Now, the one thing that I, I did notice, uh, and I actually noticed this on our basement map before I noticed it here, was um, the shadow does kind of cut over to the wall. Technically okay, but there's a little bit of um, discrepancy between like how far down it goes. It's so minute, most people wouldn't notice it, I am a control freak, and I feel like whether it's this kind of project, a writing project, anything, if there's something, some way that I can contribute, I try to. So, like, I try and notice the things that might stick out. <clears throat> she got nice little flowers that she put around that look very natural. Um, just everything looks really nice. This is a, a very classic-looking map. There's nothing really that... I think would jump out at most people as hey this is not looking right um, right now in its in its current form you could say that it exists um, it's just a regular old temple there's nothing uh, there's nothing too wrong with what you might have here now what we did was we were trying to kind of sell a story about um, you know it's a temple that was taken over by you know like a darker sect and they're corrupting it and things like that which is why as you go up a floor you can see the staircase up again she's got a little bit of shadow here i don't think that i would have noticed anything too wonky except i think what she probably did was she used the she used like the snap tool because you can see the shadow kind of ends right here against the step I don't know that I would have done that. I might have cleaned it up so that it was the next step down as it progresses would have a little sh shadow because right now it kind of looks like it terminates on the tile instead of the stair. Technically both are okay. I think it probably would just look a little nicer um, if it was the step itself that it terminated against. Now we, we can see here, first glance, nothing too shabby. Everything looks to be in order. There's nothing going on but whoa. We've got uh, chunks of debris over here and things like that. So this is your first sign that maybe something's going wrong. And as you can come over here, things start to look a little bit dingier, a little bit more grim. And then we've got some cracks in the facade. Everything just comes together really nice. The, uh, the cracks that she did, the lava cracks, turning it into just like a real like architectural crack looks very, very nice. Everything kind of came together in a really nice way. Let's head down to the basement real quick. And here's where you can see things are real messed up. So we can actually see the lava at this point. She used some of the actual lava cracks. We're coming down here. This is where I noticed it a little bit more um, because we don't have shadow on the wall here, but we do here. So I will probably try to fix that a little bit. Um, I think thought I noticed it even more maybe the first time I was looking at it there was something that jumped out a little bit anyway not a huge problem either way but uh, you start to come through you start to notice a lot of these things you start to notice uh, these portals that are bringing in bad guys and things like that what do we have here what is this a brass thurible so uh, typically um, you'll see that it's like a sensor uh, c-e-n-s-e-r so it's like the, the incense devices that you'll see in kind of like Catholic churches and stuff like that. So um, we've got some, what do we got? I feel like this is dragon or hell stuff. Spiky rock wall. Pretty cool stuff. So again, the whole concept was there's corruption kind of uh, coming out of this place. And I, we do notice 
I didn't change anything here. This one kind of comes out, so what I might do is, for the sake of kind of cleaning things up, like I said, I'm a bit of a control freak. Um, what I might do is kind of move it back and in so that you don't see any of those kind of like pop-offs. <clears throat> Won't do it now. I'll try and figure it out later and see if anything really jumps out at me. Got some supplies, nothing in here that looks truly corrupt, but we do have, again, outside some, some rock wall stuff. Might move that back a little bit too. Some really cool stuff that she layered out really nice. Um, really cool way of doing it. Let's see what this item was. This is a hell pillar. And then we've got these obelisks that look like little insectoid things. Hello, jelly beans! A lot of broken statues and stuff like that. A real big portal that we have here. We've got these portals over here that I think also from hell but look a little bit cleaner and this one just looks insane it's a nice big portal um i do like the 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 kind of composition of this guy it has a nice kind of shape to it and i feel like a lot of the other portals that you get in the stamps that they give you don't have that kind of context to them and we've done things in like our home campaigns like i i made something with um I made some stuff with styrofoam that I really liked, but nothing quite comes close to that. This is the closest that it gets. And again, it has that nice shape. Right now, it's kind of tucked under, so you don't see like the horns. It just looks like a normal skull. You don't really second guess it if you if you're not using this kind of thing a lot. <clears throat> Ooh, Kev says, "Good news, Hades tripped me, and something in my ankle popped again." And then he did the little Alicia, <laughs> Alicia crying emoji. <laughs> Is it starting to swell again, Kev? Is everything okay? I feel like this is your third your third big issue that you've had now. Even the statues are getting corrupt. Some very cool stuff. I, I might, uh, in a situation like this, you can see the floor kind of coming through. So maybe what I would do is maybe paint over it with some black underneath and give it a little bit more texture. Same thing down here, like you can definitely see the floor coming through, and this is supposed to be a wall spike, not a floor spike or anything like that. So I might do a little bit to kind of clean it up and make it look like, you know, it's it's not just a piece that's stepping over, it's a little bit of everything. But all in all, things are looking pretty good. We've got these sarcophagi that are about, about 10 feet, maybe a little less because you figure this is where the tile ends. Um, so this is where, like, you could say that, you know, it terminates. So eight feet, you figure it's a nice sarcophagus in a temple. I feel like everything looks pretty darn good. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bothered by any of this stuff. Oh, it looks so good. She did a really, really good job. You got these portals that are kind of facing opposite directions here. Um, I wonder what I would do in that situation. Got this big old skull thing over here. There's a lot to play with, especially in the basement map. The basement map, I think, is my favorite. The other ones are really fantastic, too. <laughs> Kev says, it hasn't stopped being swollen since the last pop. Are you going to end up doing something along the lines of um, putting the boot back on and seeing if that helps? Or are you going to be stubborn like I know you can be? <laughs> Alright, we are... At the point where I think we're done with um, with most of these looks at these maps, we're gonna try something now. I am going to put the timer on, so we got 57 seconds until the uh, until I try and add again. Kev says no, nope, just physical therapy and brace. And when you say physical therapy, do you mean self-run physical therapy, or are you gonna actually go and, and try and meet up with somebody and have them go through it? Didn't have my brace on today because I was running late. Did it, uh, did, when did, uh, did Hades do that to you? Is that today, or? Don't be silly. Uh, let's see. You know, I'm noticing the, the way that this looks is kind of strange, um, because the shadow is going downward. Well, I should say it's technically going upward. So we're seeing more shadow as we go up the staircase. It's tricky because we've got light down here for sure, but we've seen light elsewhere on these guys as well it's an interesting notion all right i have got 
one second left over here on my side. Um, let's try and run an ad. I don't know for sure if it's going to work. I'm going to do a 90 second ad. And it gave me a little caution tape icon. So it's not working for 90s, 60s, or 30s. Let's do, let's try and do it the old fashioned way. And we're going to do it right in the chat. I'm going to, I think it's just going to let me do, I'm going to try and do commercial 90. There we go. All right. So this is initiating a 90 second commercial break. Who knows if it's actually going to work. No. Nah. All right. Well, I mean, I, it, it says, please keep in mind that your stream is still live and not everyone will get a commercial. So that's cool, I guess. Um, I don't have a commercial running right now for everybody. We'll see. I think when it was running for Rihanna, she said that it was just doing something in the corner. Um, the idea being, again, and this is me being very new with the whole affiliate thing. Um, if you are running an ad... For, and, and that should be okay. She was running it on her phone as well. And she got like a, a corner ad um, that was running at the same time. I think maybe she was getting sound through that instead of through me. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. But the whole idea is... Oh, that nerdy kid told me to hydrate. So I got to hydrate. I got a nice cold water here. Kev is using those new Quest coins that we got. They look really nice when they're uh, shrunken down like that. They are gold coins with the uh, the emblem of our, our tabletop game, Quantum Quest. We've got some more ways to uh, to integrate that into the uh, the world soon. We got Obsessive Sec J. Hello, sorry for bothering you. I want to offer a promotion to your channel. Viewers, followers, views, chatbots, etc. Price is lower than any competitor. Uh, I appreciate it, but not at the moment. I got, I got a stream that I'm doing, and then I, I got some other stuff going on afterwards, but I'll go back and I'll look through these uh, these chats and I'll see what uh, what it all looks like. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, <clears throat> we, um, we're we going to integrate some Quantum Quest stuff into the channel very soon, I think. I just didn't have any time to do any channel rewards or anything like that. Um, but we Kevin and I were talking, Matt and I were talking, Ran and I were talking... Um, a very cool thing uh, is we're going to be looking at um, bringing back Quantum Quest Live and doing it in a fun new way because now that we have channel points, everybody can kind of get involved a little bit more. Um, but more on that later. I'm going to have like a whole other screen to, to dive into when those kind of things happen. Because said, what a wild place to do this. <laughs> and and I get it. It's, one, it's weird because it happens live. Like you and I are not used to to that kind of experience and having that kind of stuff happen live. But it does. It happens. Um, all right. So we're going to... Technically, we're going to assume that your car warranty is expired. Care to talk? Um, we're going to assume at this point that the um, the commercials have run their their thing. Oh, Joe wants me to do a posture check. You can hear the, uh, the chair moving about a little bit. I am, I am in good posture position Kev said oh the good old days of happy hour live um so speaking of posture checks speaking of Kev hurting his ankle and everything like that I was running up here to just do like a quick bathroom break and everything like that and when I went to sit down my my leg popped like my knee like Kev knows my my knee has been giving me problems for a little while and I ended up having my own little problem, and I slammed down on the poor toilet. John is, he's not feeling good right now. Um, so we've got this work that we've done on uh, our uh, Rocky Mountain Wizard Tower kind of thing already. Um, we're only going to be doing the second half of this map right now. Let me see, where's my, where is my, there we go. I'm going to turn the opacity on a little bit for that. Kev cheered me up. Let's see. I'm going to turn that on just so that I have a little bit of overlay and I know where to kind of stop paying attention a little bit more. Um, 
yeah, my, my knee just messed up real bad, too. So you're not the only one with leggy problems. Um, so we, we started this map last week. It's still, it's going to be a lot of work because it is two different maps. And, and I know that I need to do two different components. I need to do the bottom half down here, which is going to be our typical top-down stuff. And then we're going to have kind of the vista up here, which is why the cliffs look very different than the typical top-down maps that we have. Um, we're using regional cliffs, and in the background you can see, I think it was Ansari was the person's name, and if I'm wrong about that, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, the idea being that what we'll do is we're going to change out the, the, the mountains that he has. This is just a, a background that I'm using for reference at this point. Um, we're going to end up using the Rocky Mountains, um, and there's also a Rocky Cliffs pack that I can use um, to kind of enhance this vista and make it more my own and then we'll bring it all the way down here it'll probably terminate right around here like we'll have uh maybe a little bit of water coming through here from map to map just to kind of connect it a little bit more but uh yeah so that's what we got um i did just notice we've got some shadow that's coming through across these two pieces let's try and clean that up a little bit and that way it connects but it doesn't look stylistically too different as long as we move certain things up a little bit. So let's move the tent and the tree. The tent can move up a little bit. The tree actually has to move up a decent amount. Move that there. Move the rock over, perhaps. I think we've got another rock over there. There we go. Maybe a little bit more for the tree. And that way, like you can see, the shadow is not coming into the next map. Um, bump up tent a little bit for the same reason and over here just because that one is actually real quick let's shift that over and that'll be how we decide where this tent is because really stylistically they're pretty different they uh they they work on these methods in a pretty nice way but we need them to do we need them to perform a little differently so this is how we're cleaning those kind of things up. I said we weren't going to work on the top map. We're working on the top map. This big tree over here, same problem. So we're moving that into a, a position where we don't have to worry about it so much. We have something else over here too. No, it's just the, the floor. All right, let's do a save. It's only twelve, but I like to be I like to be careful. <clears throat> I'm hydrating myself so no one has to hit any buttons. So I was reading a um, someone's book. So it's someone from the UK. She's got a uh, Dutch family, stuff like that. And she's writing a story that she wanted me to do some edits on. And I gave her a sample uh, pass. And it's kind of like a Dutch elvish fairy tale. And I, she did an incredible job, number one. Um, I'm not going to rat her out just yet because I know that she's still in like the the creation stages of this and everything. She was using a lot of, like, Netherlands vernacular that I've been unfamiliar with. And just, like, <clears throat> like certain words about, like, flora and things like that that are completely outside of my, my scope of, like, comfort. Like, it's stuff that I, I've never heard of or anything like that. Um, but it got me thinking, there is... The bushes that we have in the kind of incarnate set they're these summer bushes, so to speak. And they're kind of like the, in my mind, they're kind of like the the leafy, bushy kind of bushes, right? Like, if I'm looking at this, let's boot it up a little bit more. We're going to zoom it in. It's got kind of like a, a pseudo spiky feel. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking that it's more leafy. And... I don't know how I would do kind of like the the hedgy kind of bushes that you see. Um, they certainly have some hedge stuff in whatever you have here. Got some fall bushes, some summer bushes. The hell bushes are not quite what I'm looking for. All the jungle stuff doesn't really sell a point. So, like, I'm thinking of something that's, like, a little bit more like the, the sprigs that you see on, like, an evergreen tree. Something like that. 
again, to some extent, maybe these kind of do the trick. There's, um, but, but then if that's the case and you're using these as your leafy green kind of guys, there's nothing that's really got like that nice leafy bushy feel, um, that, that you can sometimes get. You know what? Maybe these ones, the reeds are as close as it gets. They're kind of that spiky little look. Maybe what we can do is grab one of these. And let's see. There we go. Maybe even a little bit greener. And then let's try and saturate it a little bit more. And then I feel like that kind of looks... I specifically, just to be honest with everybody, I I had a, uh, a good experience with a meal this weekend. And this is what's reminding me. What it's reminding me of. Because I went over to... JB Dawson's and got some ribs and chicken and on my way home they had you know these nice bushes that they had in the area that kind of looked like this they were a little bit better shaped but I think at least for now you can kind of mush these things together in a neat way and make them look even nicer I thought I heard a doggy stomping up the stairs Something like this. Kind of clump these guys together. Yeah, I don't like that that one has a tail. There you go. This one will be a nice fit. Clump these guys together a little bit. <clears throat> it's different. You know, you typically have the set of stamps that Incarnate provides you, and then you just kind of leave it be as, as that, and you move on. Everything looks pretty nice so far. Got some things that we definitely need to change, because you can start to see the patterns kind of repeating. So you want to make sure that you're doing something to kind of figure those out. Let's, um... I don't want it to be completely rocky, so let's see if we can't find some little grass things that we can do. So we got this spiky grass that you'll see in the fey stuff. I feel like this is not quite going to be what we're looking for. But we'll drop it down to 30. You know, it's not terrible. So you can see, as we're looking through this area, we've got every four tiles. We've got something like this. So maybe what we can do is take advantage of our, our new friend, the spiky grass, and put these in a couple of places. tower a little bit too. And we'll do some some classic grass as well. And we'll be grassic. Um, let's actually dial it back even further. We've got a big couple of clumps, but we'll do some smaller ones too. guys over here. Let's do <clears throat> one more small one with one of the big ones. All right. Um, so we've got our big old house here. We got the candle. Let's do some sconces for this corridor. We got our <clears throat> our wizard who's going out into his tower in the middle of the night or something like that. Let's make sure that he's got some way to see what he's doing. We're going to put that right about there. That kind of comes out of that tile really nice. And let's see if we can't match this over on this side. It's not going to be perfect because the shape of all this is a little different. That's pretty good right there. I think. So we've got some lights over there for him. He's not going to worry about it in here. He's going to take his candle from one room to the next. So we don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> we've got the the stairs in the tower. They kind of go up. He's got the astrolabe. Let's put a, let's put a, a, a rug down there. Give him a little round rug. Let 
cavern runs like that. Let's see. Gotta be something in the core set. No? For shame. Carpet stairs. I guess we're going tavern. So let's do let's do one of these nice rugs. <clears throat> I like this pattern. So let's drop that down. It just looks like a giant pancake at this point. Um, let's see if we can go into the color and transform that to look a little bit more in line with something something a little different. Let's do again. HSBC is such a tough color scheme to work with because it doesn't always look what you want it to. Alright, we've got something like that. Let's do... I want to get the astrolabe. Or globe, or whatever it's called in this case. i got to lock some of this stuff. There we go. It's an hourglass in this case. So let's try and brighten that a little bit so we get a little bit more contrast. And what else do we want to put here? I think what I want to try and do is make sure that people know that this is the bottom of the steps and that it's moving up. You kind of see it just by the nature of how it terminated up here and everything like that, but let's see if we can't do some kind of like wooden structure at the top. Maybe use some wooden wall caps if uh, we can't find anything else that I like. Wall caps, wall caps, wall caps. Yeah, let's use the wooden wall caps. I feel like we'll be able to kind of sell what we're trying to do here. Trying to make it even. Something like that. And let's do let's actually just do a door up there while we're at it. How is the door that big and the stairs are that tiny? I figure the stairs are only like three feet wide, but I'm saying only three feet wide, and that's about how big my stairs are, so. Let's do. That, and we want to make sure that that's above the stairs. Scooch that over. Maybe we'll scooch the other guys over too, just so that it looks a little nicer. And then when it does come time to do the second floor, what we'll do is just have the door opening up into this little area. That'll probably be one of the variants that we work on. Uh, let's see. I definitely need more in that area. We got 45 changes. Let's do a save real quick. I'll hydrate some more. We, uh, we put some blackout curtains in this room to try and stave off the heat a little bit. It did not do too much today because today was a pretty hot day out there. So it is... According to my one fan that has a thermometer on it, it is 92 degrees up here right now. Doesn't feel like it. It's not as bad as it was, but that's also because I have three fans running at the same time. You know how it is. Alright, so we got just this one little boulder. I don't need that one little boulder. We kind of need more than that. Let's do <clears throat> some other big rocks. Let's grab some of these sharp rocks. We're going to go to another one of these, and we're going to bump this up to 100. I got, like, one lavender sprig in there. We'll fix that. So you know I like to kind of, like, layer the rocks a certain way. And the reason for that is because typically when you're finding something like this, finding multiple pieces of rocks or something like that. Especially this size. Once upon a time, they were just one rock. So this kind of has the the shape of a rock that was split in two by some kind of seismic activity or tectonic activity or something like that. So we'll get that. Let's grab our little 
lavender sprig. And we'll do another one of those. Drop it down to 25. A couple of these over here. I don't want to do it quite like that because then it'll look like testicles. Not quite aiming for that. Not not aiming for that, just wasn't the intention at the start. Okay, I said Thor. Thor's hammer smashed that rock. Is that what it was? We have life finding a way out of one of these little divots. I got too crazy. But we have a couple of pieces on the other side. Let's do one more piece over here. Coward? Who's coward? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You know what? We don't have any of these. Let's, let's keep on keeping on. Do another one of these over here. Got in trouble. Kind of looked like a crab for a second. And we were just talking about, you know, inappropriate things. Let's actually grab one of these summer bouches. And I think that's the same one as that one. I'm looking for something a little bit rounder. Yeah, I'm going to leave it blocked, Kev, just so that now that I'm an affiliate, they uh, they don't yell at me. Ah, no! I seriously blocked the term, not just the... not just that one instance. That was not what I intended to do. Well, I'll tell you what. They're getting angry about it. So we'll, we'll leave it be for now. It'll help us in the long run because when we start doing our D&D &D stuff and they don't want us to say certain things, it'll help us be thought forward about those kind of things. All right, let's do... Let's grab this guy one more time and... Let's do... A little bit of that color over here. Not quite that bad. You know what? That's actually the opposite of what I want to do. So specifically, what I'm trying to do... Same style, I think, as the other one. But I want to color it down. And the reason, we'll see in a moment... So if we can kind of make it look like it's descending a little bit, what we can do is maybe make a little bit of water. So let's go to like 25. And size it properly, we'll go to 30. And let's mess with the saturation a little bit too so we don't want it to look like cartoon water we want it to look a little bit a little bit more realistic it's hard to even see that that's water so let me think of <clears throat> some other way to convey that Oh god, there's so many. I bumped up the size of the stamps, so it takes longer to get to the bottom. A doot doot do oh god. My arthritis is acting up. Alright, so we've got some water lilies. That's a little too high. No! Yeah, 
Yeah, it's hard to, to kind of convey that that is water. So maybe what we can do is find... It's got like a stick. Let's find a stick. We got a marshmallow stick. And bundles of sticks. But not a straight up stick. Yeah, like the best thing you got is like a fallen branch or a fallen tree or something like that. And that's not quite what I'm going for. Let's take a look real quick one more time. What would I throw over top of that? We could do little stones. We've already got them over there. So I think, is that sharp stones? Let's see if there's something a little bit, a bit rounder that I can use. Probably not. Alright, we're stuck using what we're using. So let's dial it back to like 15 or so. And the reason that we're doing it that way is we're kind of telling the story of these little rocks that, <clears throat> because they're getting mushed up by water as much as they are, they're a little smoother. I mean, really shrinking it down is not going to do too much to show that off, but um, yeah, I can't flatten it to the background. I can flatten it to the foreground and then use that water look again. And see if, if we use it a couple times. Let's see if there's like a ripple effect that I can use. They've got like the splashes from the waterfalls and stuff like that. I am looking specifically for like a ring of water, like a bubble or something I can do. The shame of it is, this is as close as it freaking gets. Let's see. Got some stream waterfalls. We've got holy water that we'll never use. Uh, maybe I can find, like, a bubble. Oh, incarnate. I need to write this down and make note of it. So we've got explosion marks. We've, I know that I've seen some other stuff before that we could use. And we'll do... Uh, spear? Orb? I've used it before. There we go. That's not going to work. Alright. So here's how we're going to do this. Kind of just looks like a lily pad at the point. At this point. Uh, we'll desaturate it a little bit. And we're going to mess with the opacity. See, in that case, it doesn't look half bad. It is always fun to, like, figure out these things. That does kind of look a little bit bubbly. We're going to do one more pass. And I am going to make this a little bit bluer. There you go. A little bit more. You can kind of see that it descends down into this little puddle or whatever. It'll definitely look a little bit different. Maybe the wizard comes over here and he enchants this pool. Let's do another save. So I'm trying not to make it super busy. I don't want it to look too crazy. 
we've got some maps that I like to have kind of like a nice chill kind of atmosphere. And, uh, and then we've got others. Matt is really good at making like crazy busy maps and stuff like that. And I don't necessarily want to do that here. Because he's so much better at it than I am. Let's take some of these again. And we're going to throw them over on this side now. We'll just take the exact style that we have and we'll move it this way. The shadows are always pointing to the southeast, so we're okay as far as that goes. Just mess with the shape a little bit. That way, if someone's looking at it with the naked eye, they don't immediately jump to the same conclusion. It looks different enough at this point. Uh, let's see. So we're going to take a step into sci-fi land real quick and see if there's any stuff in the sci-fi terrain that I like. So we've got the arid world stuff. City, corporate, human alliance, human fleet, blah, 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 blah. Slimy and horrific is not what we're going to use. Arid Worlds is as close as it's going to get, and I have a feeling that that's not what I'm going to want to use. So let's head back to our fantasy battle maps and see if there's anything else that I can use. Tell you what, since we're in the wizard stuff, let's take a look over here and see what else we can use. Let's give we're gonna give our wizard a teleportation thing that he can easily get from one part of the world to the next. He doesn't have to manually travel. Fade that a little bit. Leave it so it's not popping so much. Let's see if we can put some effects in there too. Got some spell effects that we can do. Just a couple of tiny flashes. And maybe these ones are, will be a bit brighter. That all figured out now. So one of the things that I think that we don't have a lot of opportunities to use. There's no paintings in the incarnate set. You know, like there's no there's no wall art or anything like that. It's tough because you are doing a top down, so how do you pull that off? And it really does just become this kind of stuff that we've done before. And it's tough too because it shouldn't be flat like I have it. see what we can do. So I'm trying to tilt it, so we're going to try and transform it. And that looks okay. Do it a little bit more, perhaps. And it's above the grid line, and I'm not a huge fan of that. We have it for the walls and stuff too, so I might have to change that. Let's see, what do we have? We have them at three. Let's go to the grid real quick. I can change that by making it so that the 
layer is one higher, and that way we've got everything under the grid. We can throw that back. Uh, no, we're going to keep it there. That's a family that he had to say goodbye to. Alright, what else can we do? Let's turn off the grid. still a lot of pattern that I see, so what we'll probably do is some brush techniques and things like that to clean it up. Because I think that's going to be the easiest way to get rid of a lot of these patterns, is instead of seeing the same thing over and over again, we'll do a little brush thing. But for now, I'll tell you what, we've been playing with this for a while. We saw a lot today. Let's, uh, let's wrap this show up real quick. So folks, Oh, that's a chat break. On the screen right now, you should see... You know what? Here, we're going to go back to regular recording. Just so that I can do my... Whoops. Definitely chocolate milk. Alright, on the screen right now, you should see all the places that you can find Telus on the internet. Telus.com, great place to start. But if you want to see some of our premium stuff, you want to go to either patreon.com slash Telus or telus.etsy.com. Patreon is a great place to look for digital goods. Um, all these maps that we work on relatively quickly after the uh, after the map is done and I've got the variants done, we throw that on Patreon. Those are usually done on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. I think we have 82 maps on Patreon right now. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do some kind of art piece uh, that's you know reflective of the world of Telst. If you want to go to Etsy, that's where you can find our physical battle maps. We have 48 Telus battle maps right now that are put together on these beautiful neoprene polyester uh, 20 by 40 maps. They look great on a tabletop um, table. Uh, they're just a, a really good uh, thing to add to your TTRPG. Um, and then if you want to go look at some of our other stuff, we've got two TikTok channels that you can look at. At Weird Witch Wands is where you can see Rihanna's handcrafted magic wands. And at Tales of Telest is where you can see our dogs. No, oh, I said it and I summoned one because Zelda is over here sniffing at the little blanket that she likes to lay on. Um, you can go check her out on Tales of Telest on TikTok. Uh, and then the last two places that I'll bring your attention to are youtube.com slash at world of Telest. That's where you can go to uh, to check out these videos well after they're, uh, they're off this channel and everything. Um, but twitch.tv slash that Telus guy is the first place that you want to go because that's where you can chat with us. That's where you can use the new channel points. Um, that is where you can do the cool emotes and everything. Uh, that nerdy Keb just snake bit me or something. That's not nice. Uh, but yeah, it'll, it'll be a good time if you go to Twitch first. Um, and we've got some cool stuff coming. Hopefully tomorrow I can show off some previews of that because we do have some fun stuff that we're working on. As Kev said, is that not a dino? It looks like a snake to me, but I'm not too sure. Let me see if I can hover over it if it zooms in. It looks like it might be a Komodo dragon. I don't know. Any woozle. That wraps things up for me. Uh, I will be back tomorrow at 7 to do a another map. Uh, well, the same map, but just cleaning it up a little bit more. But in the meantime, I miss you. <laughs>